coming up on today's show, the Tesla Semi breaks ground at Tesla's official reveal event. We get surprised at the same event with the Tesla Roadster 2, and we find out what the future of Faraday Future looks like. These stories and more coming next on 10. This is 10 from Transport Evolved, the roundup show that takes the week's news in the world of cleaner, greener, safer and smarter transport and gives it to you in a bite-sized form in time for the weekend. So kick back and enjoy. It's Friday, November 17th, 2017. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. And if you've noticed that we've been a little light on content this week on the channel, it's because I've been busy doing non-filming businessy stuff that heralds some exciting really exciting news that I hope to reveal in a few weeks' time. I promise that I'll share with the class when I can. We're starting today's show the only way we can with details of Tesla's special event last night at which it unveiled not one but two very important vehicles, the Tesla Semi and the next generation Tesla Roadster. Semi first, it's an all-electric full-size Class 8 day cab semi with quad electric motors driving the rear wheels, a claimed range of 500 miles, 804 kilometers per charge, with a larger capacity battery pack, 300 miles with the standard pack, and the capability to tow 80,000 pounds. Built with lots in common with Model 3, it has the same door handles and in-cab displays apparently. The Tesla Semi has enhanced autopilot just like the rest of the Tesla family, and will be capable of adding 400 miles of range in 30 minutes thanks to Tesla's new mega charger stations, which are of course just designed for the truck, which will be operated worldwide by Tesla and be completely powered by solar electricity harvested on site and then stored inside power packs at each location. Then there's the cab itself, where the driver, with no engine to worry about beneath the cab, can stand upright with ease and occupies not a traditional position, but a central position in the middle of the vehicle, Formula One style. The semi will be guaranteed for 1 million miles, says Elon Musk, while payback costs are expected to take two years thanks to more than 200,000 US dollars in fuel savings. While we don't have a full price yet, Tesla will be taking $5,000 reservations as from today for the semi, with production promised for 2019. With the semi out of the way, Tesla's Elon Musk gave everyone an extra surprise by unveiling the next generation Tesla Roadster, the Tesla Roadster 2, by feigning the end of the reveal and then having one drive out the back of the Tesla semi trailer in a moment of showmanship that I have to give Musk and Tesla kudos for. The 2 plus 2 Roadster 2 will come with an entry level 0 to 60 miles per hour time of 1.9 seconds, said Musk, a quarter mile time of 8.9 seconds, and reach a top speed of over 250 miles per hour, making it the fastest and quickest production car ever, assuming nobody else beats it to market. Range-wise, it will come as standard with a 200 kilowatt hour battery pack and have a claimed range of 620 miles per charge. But while it's an amazing spec list, you're going to have to wait to see it, just like the Tesla Semi. And the price? Well, you can get a limited production Founders Edition for $250,000, which you have to put down now, or you can reserve a regular Roadster 2 with a price tag of $200,000, with a $45,000 US dollar reservation today. If you want one, you'd better start saving. From Tesla now, we shift to BMW, which, although it's using a massive amount of renewable energy already in its production facilities, has just made a commitment to only use non-fossil fuels to power its factories moving forwards. Announced at the recent United Nations Climate Conference in Bonn, Germany, BMW says it will be buying local clean power for all of its 31 production facilities across 14 countries. It's already buying in renewable energy in large quantities already, but to transition to full renewable, it's looking at using methane gas from a landfill operation in South Carolina, solar panels from local farms, and yes, even power from a South African biomass plant powered by chicken poop and cow dung. With one terawatt hours of power to source, it's quite the pledge. So here's to a cleaner carbon footprint for BMW's factories moving forwards. Ever since the Dieselgate debacle of 2015, Volkswagen has been eagerly playing up its intent to become a global leader in electric vehicles, yet to date, it hasn't really done a whole lot except show a whole lot of different concept cars designed to get us excited about its electric car future. This week, however, it pushed things up a gear, announcing that it would be spending more than 12 billion US dollars to bring a whole new line of plug-in vehicles to market by 2025, 
specifically for the Chinese market. With China now the world's number one auto market, Volkswagen's push will focus on China first, developing 40 new plug-in models over the next few years. It's likely that some of these will be electric and plug-in hybrid versions of existing models, but as with any business venture, the investment in China should trickle down to other markets too. Watch this space. Over the past few months, we've all watched Faraday Future turn from the cocky automotive startup eager to steal Tesla's crown into a shadow of its former self, cancelling plans for its massive $1 billion facility north of Las Vegas, Nevada, and instead focusing on more modest facilities in California. Well, this week, we were treated to the latest twists and turns, with details of an emergency $14 million loan from Innovatum Capital Partners being swiftly followed on Monday by news that Tata, the Indian company that owes Jaguar Land Rover, had purchased a $900 million investment in the company. The deal hasn't been confirmed by either party, so it's still in the rumor stages right now, but if it's true, it could see Faraday Future live to fight another day and maybe, just maybe, come to market after all. For some time now, General Motors has been talking up its goals for electric and electrified vehicles, promising a range of electric, plug-in hybrid and hydrogen fuel cell vehicles moving forwards. But this week, during the Barclays Global Automotive Conference in New York, GM CEO Mary Barra put a little flesh on those goals. These included promising five all-electric SUVs, two of which will be luxury models, two crossovers, one of which will be a luxury model, two cars, one of which will be luxury, a commercial van, and a shared autonomous electric vehicle that will be used in a future ride-sharing service from the company. She also displayed a slide showing what looks like an SUV variant of the Chevrolet Bolt EV that's possibly far more advanced than just a conceptual drawing. Of course, GM remains tight-lipped, but I'd expect, and other outlets agree, that we'll see at least one new electric vehicle from GM debut in January at the Detroit Auto Show. While we've actually covered NASA on this show before, in reference to autonomous vehicle partnerships with Nissan, we've never actually covered it working on airborne vehicles before, until today, because this week Uber announced a partnership with NASA to develop a new type of autonomous vehicle air traffic control that would make Uber's dream of autonomous passenger air taxis a commercial reality. Uber wants to bring autonomous air taxis to Los Angeles by 2020, but in order for that to happen, it's going to have to work with NASA to develop its own air management, air traffic control system that works for autonomous vehicles. That will happen over the next two years with recommendations from the NASA project due to go to the FAA for approval in 2019. So if you want to get an air taxi across LA, you've got to wait just over two years, assuming everything goes to plan, that is. In the year since the US Electoral College voted Donald Trump to become president, we've seen some pretty stark changes in US policy on global climate change, electric vehicles, and plenty more. And while the federal tax incentives I reported on last week have survived the current tax bill being proposed by the GOP, the US is technically still planning to withdraw from the Paris Climate Accord in 2020 following President Trump's announcement that he would do so earlier this year. But this week, Connecticut, Delaware, Washington DC, Maryland, Massachusetts, New York, Rhode Island and Vermont joined existing pledges from California, Oregon and Washington states to reduce emissions from transportation, keeping those states essentially in line with the Paris Agreement. I'm sure the pledge will be challenged or made difficult by someone, but it's good for those states to continue their path towards reduced emissions. And if you're someone who thinks I've gone way too political with this story, just remember that overall scientific consensus is that accelerated global warming is caused by us humans, fossil fuels are running out, and that we as a planet are consuming resources far faster than we should. So reducing carbon emissions is a smart move regardless of your opinion on the person in the White House. Enough said. Last week, you may remember, we covered the price hike for the Opel Ampera E, a car which hasn't exactly had an easy time in Europe since it arrived there earlier this year. When I covered that story, I noted that it seemed either Opel or General Motors wasn't on board with getting enough Ampera E's to Europe, and postulated that the sale of Opel to PSA by GM may to be to blame. Well, this week, PSA announced that it intends all of the Opel brand cars to be offered with an electrified version by 2024, a move which would accelerate Opel's transition away from GM's platforms and onto PSA's own electric vehicle platforms. The goal? To give Opel full access to PSA's electric vehicle platforms by 2020, completing the transition four years later. 
Among the discussed models, a fully electric Corsa, which I should note is a favourite for driving schools in Europe. So if you've got a child of a certain age, they may be actually learning to drive an EV very soon. We've already had plenty of Tesla this show, so now it's time to talk about one of Elon Musk's other companies, The Boring Company, and what looks like a little miscommunication about what verbal government approval means, specifically concerning the approval Elon Musk thought he had to build a Hyperloop, um, boring company tunnel from New York to Washington DC. You see, it turns out that one of President Trump's advisors may have said that they liked the idea and said it was something that they thought would not be a problem, but it wasn't an official government approval. That, as it turns out, hasn't happened yet. Of course, there's still a chance that the boring company will get those permits, but it's likely to take a lot longer than just a verbal yes. Sorry, Elon. We might all be focusing on the Tesla Semi this week, but Tesla's biggest competitor in the zero emission truck segment, Nikola Motors, which already has contracts drawn up with some pretty big haulage firms, has announced that it's chosen NEL as a sole supplier for its hydrogen fuel filling network. The network, the world's largest at 2,000 miles and 16 stations, will not only keep Nikola truck drivers fueled, but will also be responsible for electrolyzing all of the water required to produce all of the hydrogen fuel those trucks will need. You see, unlike other hydrogen filling networks, which generally get their hydrogen from reforming natural gas, Nikola says it will be producing all of the hydrogen its vehicles you need in a clean, green, renewable way to be truly zero emission. And that's from electrolyzing water. I don't have the time here to go into details, but with the trucks expected to exceed 1,200 miles per fill, 1,900 kilometers, Tesla's competition is pretty tough in this segment. It's going to be interesting to see who wins. I've already covered the details of several automakers looking to expand their electric vehicle lineups this week, but I'm going to squeeze one more in before I finish. Renault Nissan, which is apparently readying itself for a high volume push. Now that's according to the Alliance chairman Carlos Ghosn, who told Automotive News that the 12 new plug-in models that we're about to see from the Renault Nissan Alliance in the next five years will be high volume models, not niche market vehicles as they have been thus far. Moreover, these vehicles will occupy prominent positions within their respective companies' lineups. It's frustrating to not know any more details at this stage, but it does appear that Renault-Nissan, rather than lag behind as some have feared, is ready to push a little harder into the electric vehicle segment. Given how disappointed some are with the new range of the new Leaf, I think it's about time. And finally, if you're interested in flying cars, you'll know about the Terrafugia, the company that's been wanting to bring its transition flying car and TFX autonomous flying cars to market for some time. While we've seen working prototypes from the company, nothing is in production yet, but this week, the company was successfully acquired by Geely, the Chinese firm that also owns Volvo and the London taxi company. With more cash on board than ever before, things are looking up and, says Terrafugia, we should see it debut its first production flying car in 2019. Which means 2019 is going to be one heck of a year if all of those promised vehicles I've told you about make it to production by then. Don't you agree? And on that exciting note, it's time to say goodbye for the week. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell to make sure you don't miss a single episode. And if you like the idea of watching this show with zero ads, why not consider donating to the show's running costs by making a donation through Patreon? Donate more than five bucks a month, and you get early access to all new shows, and you get to see them without ads. So follow the link below or at the end of this video to find out more. I'm going to be taking a little break next week for the US Thanksgiving, but I won't be gone for that long. So until then, thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. That was 10. Have a great weekend. And until next time, keep evolving. <laughs>